Hey Calvary, thanks for joining us here this morning for your word for the day. My name is Robert, excited to share a little bit from the book of Psalms for it with us. You know, for anyone that's a follower of Jesus, who believes that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world, who believes that Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life and died on the cross for their sins and then has chosen to follow Jesus with their life, there's an inherent conflict that exists within us, or at least it should. And that conflict has nothing to do with doctrinal differences or Bible translation types or theology or church structure, but it has to do with us and the life that we live. Because see, as much as we as followers of Jesus strive to live like Jesus and follow his example in every way in our life, we know that we fall short. Because the truth is that if we are growing in our relationship with God, there should nearly always be some level of divide between how we are living and how we want to be living. And this is because we recognize that we are all sinners in need of grace, that we are not who we want to be, that there is still a goal that is set before us for, for who God wants us to be in this life. And sometimes it's an encouraging thing for us to say, hey, I need to strive forward. But sometimes it's something really discouraging. We look at our past and we can be overwhelmed by just how short we've come up on that standard. And it's this reality in a very dramatic way that caused David to write Psalm 51. After he was confronted with his sin with Bathsheba, he reflected on his sin and was broken and overwhelmed by it. And he penned these words in Psalm 51. He says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly with my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. You can sense there that David is overwhelmed and overcome just by the failures, the, the shortcomings of his sin. And, and maybe you're in a place where you feel that tidal wave of just regret and, and shame of, of what your past looks like. But see, David models what we are called to do as well when we see and recognize sin in our life. And that is to humble ourselves and come before God with repentance and brokenness over our sin, but a desire to be made new, to be refreshed through Jesus. And scripture shares that there is great news in these moments that through Jesus, we have the promise of forgiveness. See, 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, God is both faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that good news is available to you today. If you believe in Jesus, no matter what your past mistakes or sins look like, no matter what you're carrying, you can be made new. You can take those to God and share the heart of David here and say, I am broken by my sin. But also as you read and continue in verse 10, he says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you're saying, God, create a new heart within me, create a, a renewed steadfast spirit within me. No matter where you're at, I hope that your heart is one of continued repentance and continued striving to be made new in Christ so that you can better follow and represent him to the world around you. Because no matter what we do, no matter how we fail, God is always there to pick us up, to give us a second chance, and to cleanse us anew and renew that spirit within us. So turn to him today and continue striving forward to be more like Jesus. We'll see you next time.